A number of years ago, a previously unknown cave painting of a horse and bull was discovered secreted away in a sandstone cave in the greater San Francisco Bay Area. It was found by someone I know while he was out hiking on one of the local mountains. According to my acquaintance, the horse measures about 30 inches in length. The bull is about the same length. I've not seen this painting in person but it appears to be recent in origin. The cave is located in a remote and rugged area, several miles from the nearest parking lot or public road. A second painting of two smaller horses was found on the wall of a second cave located nearby. I assume both these paintings are the work of the same artist. To some degree, the first painting reminds me of the Great Hall of the Bulls at Lascaux the famous Upper Paleolithic cave art site in the Dordogne region of southwestern France. The Hall of the Bulls consists of a polychrome mural measuring 20 meters in length, painted on the vaulted walls of a naturally occurring rotunda inside the limestone cave. The paintings my acquaintance found appear to depict a Pleistocene horse and an auric, the ancestors of our domestic horses and cattle and common motifs in Upper Paleolithic rock art. At last go, a horse and bull represent the point in the mural where two groups of animals, horses, bulls, and stags, come from opposite directions and intersect. That suggests that this particular horse and bull might have been especially important to the meaning of the Lascaux mural. The similarity between the two paintings suggests that the ancient Lascaux painting may have served as the model for the more recent Bay Area rendition. Indeed, the subject matter, color choices, and styles of the two paintings appear similar. So what might that mean? Well, I decided to try and find out. Not long after I received the photo of the cave paintings from my acquaintance, I shared it with a number of my colleagues, primarily archaeologists working in California. To a person... Those who responded noted that the paintings were obviously recent and were thus graffiti. They are probably correct in both of those assertions, although I prefer to see the painting in person before deciding if it's recent or not. Perhaps it's historic graffiti. And I think it's important to rule out the possibility, as remote as it might be, that this represents a mission-era painting of a Spanish horse and longhorn steer. Otherwise, this painting doesn't resemble any California Indian rock art that I'm aware of. The painting certainly appears to be recent, and for the purpose of this discussion, that's how I will consider it. But even that the painting is recent, should it be considered mere graffiti? And if it's in fact graffiti, should we consider the spectacular paintings at Lascaux to be graffiti as well? I suspect that most of us will agree that the beautiful Lascaux figures are not graffiti. Instead, we consider those superbly painted animals and abstract signs to be among our most valuable examples of prehistoric art. That's why Lascaux was added to UNESCO's list of World Heritage Sites in 1979. As such, the site is considered an integral part of the world's cultural patrimony. There is general appeal of Paleolithic art, like that found at Lascaux. In their book, Images of the Ice Age, Archaeologist Paul Bond and photographer Jean Vertu noted that, and I'll quote, It still represents our most direct contact with the beliefs and preoccupations of our ancestors, and therefore constitutes one of the most fascinating episodes of prehistory. End quotes. The general consensus among rock art scholars is that Lascaux was painted by early modern humans of the Magdalenian culture between about 18,000 and 12,000 years ago, during the terminal Pleistocene. The paintings and their overall context suggest that the cave art served to facilitate individual and community rituals, such as those associated with the acquisition of power, social group maintenance, and issues of world renewal.
Some scholars associate Lascaux and certain other Upper Paleolithic sites like it with the practice of shamanism. It seems almost certain that Magdalenian shamans would have been present at Lascaux, although it's unlikely that the site was reserved exclusively for their use. More recently, other scholars have suggested that certain aspects of the Lascaux paintings, especially the occurrence of non-figurative dot clusters, may represent prehistoric star charts, and that the paintings are perhaps associated with the summer solstice. They have pointed out a similarity between the dot clusters and the constellations Archer, Scorpion, Lion, and Bull. Interestingly, the similarity occurs in the vicinity of the horse and auric. Of special note, the dying light of the upper Paleolithic sun at summer solstice is said to have struck the same general area. There are several areas in California where Native Americans have in recent years started to make rock art again, or else maintain and or utilize existing rock art derived from an earlier time. Their actions appear to be grounded in personal and cultural desires to perpetuate traditions unique to their peoples. Similarly, in Australia, indigenous peoples regularly maintain or repaint certain of their ancestral rock art occurrences. In cases such as these, most anthropologists perceive this to be a culturally valid activity, representing the perpetuation of time-honored cultural traditions. So what does that mean in the case of this apparently modern-day painting on a mountain in the San Francisco Bay Area? Is this new painting an example of rock art, or is it merely graffiti? Given that the Bay Area, unlike southwestern France, lacks a Magdalenian history, the artist is seemingly a vandal who hiked deep into public lands and defaced the cave's walls. But what if the vandal is of European descent, tracing, either knowingly or unknowingly, his or her ancestry to the Magdalenian culture? And what if the painter's intent were to paint a scene from Lascaux for a reason similar to that of his or her ancient ancestors? In other words, what if the artist was rebirthing a traditional form of artistic expression? Would the artist still represent a vandal in the common sense of the term? And what if it should be discovered that at summer solstice, the dying light of our modern sun lights up the interplay of this newly painted ancient horse and bull, just as it seems to have done at Lascaux thousands of years before? Would that matter? Writing about tradition, the historian Clinton Blount and the anthropologist Dorothea Theodorata said, and I'll quote, Tradition might best be viewed as the way in which a society views and even uses its own past. Every society possesses a history, whether it is recorded in written form or remembered and passed on in oral accounts. At any time, members of the society exercise choices about what is remembered Tradition becomes that which is both remembered and emphasized. To some extent, then, tradition may include those elements of the past that are selected to meet the needs of the present, whether those needs be identity, security, well-being, or a host of other motivating factors. The implication of this alternate definition is that rather than being diluting, change is an integral and maneuverable part of tradition, and influences the many ways societies adapt to changing surroundings. End quote. What if our modern day cave artist should prove to be a person of European ancestry, employing an ancient artistic tradition that, while known in modern times, has gone unused until now? Would the artist's paintings represent a traditional practice, even if thousands of miles and thousands of years removed from the Magdalenian? I'm certainly not suggesting that this modern-day cave painting should have any value to anyone beyond its artist. It almost certainly doesn't. Personally, I think it's vandalism. That said, I'm interested in the anthropological implications this painting might bring to a discussion of art. The nature of art is one of the most enduring and conflicted debates of modern times. Everyone has an opinion about art, but there are few established norms as to what it truly is. Public resource managers must grapple with this topic from time to time when spontaneous and uninvited art appears spray-painted on the sides of vehicles 
and facilities arranged in the form of place rock labyrinths or cairns in public parks, or, as in this case, painted on the walls of secluded caves. Typically, such art is viewed as graffiti, an unwelcome detraction to be removed. However, the anthropologist in me suggests that we need to consider each case of uninvited art on its own particular merits. Otherwise, I think we run the risk of defining art at the expense of tradition.